In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a title screen fade out and fade into the backdrop of the first scene. On this YouTube channel, I make coding tutorial videos just like this one, so if you're new here, please consider subscribing to help the channel out. I've already gone ahead and created the two backdrops that I'm going to need for this project, my title screen and my bench with view backdrops. I drew the title screen using the paint editor and the bench backdrop is from the scratch library, so I just imported it. In your project, you can have even more backdrops and have multiple scene changes using the same techniques that I'm about to show. What I first want to code up is a way to make my title screen fade out. So let me go to the code tab and to do this, I can use the change ghost effect block. So by default, it says change color. So I just have to click inside there and select ghost effect. The way that the ghost effect works is that every sprite and every backdrop starts at zero. So if we change that ghost effect and get it up to 100, then it'll be completely disappeared or ghosted. If you're wondering how I figured this out, I actually just Googled scratch fade out backdrop and found this scratch wiki article on the graphic effect. And by reading through this documentation, I was able to figure out a couple of ways to do what I wanted to accomplish, which was to fade out the backdrop. I could leave this change ghost effect value at 25 and then I basically just have to click on this block four times to get to 100 or complete ghosting, but I think four clicks is just a little bit too quick. So let me actually clear the graphic effects. I'm going to bring that in here, bring that block in here so that we remove this ghosting and let's change the effect by 10. So now if I want to make this thing completely disappear, I would have to click this 10 times or maybe have 10 duplicates like so. But this isn't very efficient because I'm doing a lot of repetition. And because I'm doing a lot of repetition, that means that it's a good opportunity to bring in a loop. So I'm going to bring in the repeat block and I'm going to repeat just one of these 10 times. And so if I click on this repeat, actually first let me clear the graphic effects to get it to zero ghosting. But if I click on this, it fades out pretty quickly. In fact, a little bit too quickly. So all I really want to do is bring in a weight block inside of there and let's wait a tenth of a second before we do that. So let me clear the graphic effects and let me run the loop. And that fade out looks much smoother. So after fading out of the title screen, we want to switch to our next backdrop, the bench with view. So I'm going to go over to looks and bring in switch backdrop to bench with view after all of this is done. So let me clear my graphic effects and let me run this and see how it works. And it doesn't look like it switched to the bench with view. Now the reason for that is because as of right now, the ghosting effect is still at 100. So I have to clear the ghosting effect. And I can do that by bringing in a clear graphic effects block inside of this script. Let me clear everything and let's start over. And you'll notice that when I started it, it did not start with my title screen. So I have to make sure at the top of this script, we switch the backdrop to title screen before we do anything. So once again, let me clear my graphic effects. And it seems to work, but it actually happens way too quickly. So in practice, when I'm actually running this, I want my backdrop, my title screen backdrop to be on screen for a few seconds. Let me put in a wait block before we start fading out. And let's wait for three seconds, let's say. So now when I click on the script, you see the title screen and three seconds later it fades out and goes into the next backdrop. Now while this code works, I actually want to make it so that my next scene fades into view. So I pretty much have to repeat the same loop over here, but instead of changing the ghost effect by 10, I want to change it by negative 10 so that I come back into view. And by doing this, I don't need to clear the graphic effects, I just need to replace that with my fade in loop. Now before I test it out, I just want to make sure that this makes sense. So what we're doing is we're, we're switching the backdrop to the title screen for three seconds, then we're ghosting or fading out, and then we're fading back in and then switching the backdrop. See, this doesn't make sense. We have to make sure we switch the backdrop before we fade back in. Otherwise, we're going to fade back into the title screen and then change the backdrop to the bench, which isn't what I want. I want to fade into the next scene. So let's test out this script.
and it looks like it works. So let's remove these extra blocks that aren't really necessary and let's bring in a event block. When the green flag is clicked, this is what I want happening. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe I want to clear all the graphic effects before I start this, just in case for some reason someone like paused the fade in animation in the previous run. So I want to clear everything and start like fresh. And now if I click on my green flag, it should work properly. Every single time. So last but not least, I have to bring in my sprite. I have to make him appear or make the sprite appear when the scene changes or when the backdrop changes. And when the green flag is clicked, what I want to make sure is that the sprite is gone or hidden. And actually right now the sprite is hidden because I clicked hide before. So when the green flag is clicked, this sprite hides. But at some point I want him to show. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked, he hides. But I want him to show up when the bench with the view fades in. So there is an event for that. There is an event for when the backdrop switches, uh, not to title screen, but to the bench with the view, then I want my sprite to show up. So when I click on this, he's gonna show up right there, and I wanna make sure that I capture the specific coordinate location that he's at, which is 15, negative 79. And once he shows up, I want him to say something silly like, although you never speak back, I want you to know that I love you, bench. Now we're ready to test out our entire project by clicking on the green flag. And it works. If you found this video to be helpful, I'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you next time.